So that one there, it's copywritten. It's not a hundred years old yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that in the fifties. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. very cool. You think it'd be it's older than that, but it's it not. Is, uh, I know if it. It goes out over Facebook or whatever. Um, it has to be turned off, otherwise we could get dinged for oh, yeah, right. a licensing violation. You're, I, I, that's not why I do it, but you're right. You're totally yeah. right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Right. That's all. Oh, keep me out of trouble. Oh yes. Because all eighteen people that watch. <laughs> Okay. All right, so, so we know, are. Be surprised. Oh yeah. You know, if we can recruit to. Uh, oh yeah. Not Trust these me. These people, right? Just but people other people, people are just like right. working <laughs> for. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, so back on our giant study, and then oh, and by way of schedule, I am here at the at the chapel on Sunday at eleven o'clock, okay. and there's not potluck this week. No. no. So I can talk as long as I need. <laughs> right. You can talk as long as you want. <laughs> don't encourage me, Liz. Liz, Liz, don't, Liz, don't encourage me. <laughs> okay, dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the evening and time to come together, uh, and as we uh, just still our hearts and, and look at the study here uh, about the giants, and, and it, it's a fun study, but there's also some some serious doctrine, serious issues that we look at here um, that we want to appreciate and understand as we look back about creation. And about your plan and Satan's attempt to thwart your plan and mm -hmm. how you just took him in his own conceits um, right up to and including uh, the mystery the, 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 the mystery program today uh, though we're not talking about that specifically that it was sure part of you taking him in his own conceits uh, we do thank you for your love and for your grace in your son's name amen so uh, that is the deal in this in this study that I've been trying to to lay out is make out make the case. The, the study of giants is, is fun. I re, I really enjoy it and, and I get a lot out of it and it, it's it's fun to kind of let your imagination run sometimes, but also to understand why are there why does the Bible even talk about giants and why were there even giants in the world? Because Satan's trying to do something. So Satan's trying to thwart God's plan, and so we've I've tried to lay out. That in that first lesson that we looked at, that the world was just an evil place. It was just a terrible, terrible place. And we get all upset about how evil the world is today. And we think, you know, this is, hey, it's always been like this. It's always been like this. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun. Nothing new <laughs> under the sun, right. Solomon was right all those years ago. You know, we, and, and I'm, you heard me say this before. We get upset in, in America because things are, are going to hell in a handbasket, and we should be upset, and then they are. Uh, but they're just returning to the way they've always been. We have, you know, yeah. in, institutionally or nationally, we just have a very short memory. Two and a, two hundred and fifty years right. of a puritanical viewpoint. Yeah. Um, but that's not the way the world's been. So, right. and, and I'm not was, justifying. And that wasn't it wasn't always easy either. No. Oh no. Times, so. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and when I make a comment like that, it, yeah, it's not meant to diminish anything. It's just yeah. this is this has been this has been an interesting time in the last two hundred and fifty years. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I got to live through some of it. I think we're seeing the end of it. You know, I have my, I have my little grandson. I just wonder about the world that he's going to see. What's, what's going to outrage him? <laughs> you know, wow. I'm, I, you know, I, I just, I, I fully accept. My kids fully accept things that outrage my parents. So what's going to be for him? So anyhow, that's neither here nor, nor there with what we're talking about. So then. Then we talked about, we started talking about the sons of God, because it talks about the sons of God came down, and uh, what was the, the, the phrase they, they used? Came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Um, so we, we, I talked about the, the sons of God, and I tried to make the case that, yeah, th those are angels. And you can go through through the, the Bible, actually, and see, and... Sons of God is not always mean an angel. In the, so you've got to look at the context. No. You are a son of God if you are saved. Okay? Israel is called the, ch they're, they're called the children of God and in his, in his bride, right? Yeah. Jesus Christ, of course, is the son right. of God. Right. Okay? And Adam is called the son of God. Okay? He's addressed at, in, in, the, in, the, in the lineage. Look back at uh, Luke, Luke 1. Oh, wait a second. Just 
two genealogies, right? Mm. Matthew, and where's the one in Luke? What the world? <laughs> this way you shouldn't go to something. This way you shouldn't go to something without a... Uh, What's that? <laughs> Thank you. I'm thinking I look. I must have looked at it three times there. Yeah, you think it'd be like one. All right. Oh, there it is. I wasn't looking far enough down. Okay. So th this is this is the the um, account of, of the Lord <laughs> Jesus Christ, not going back to David and Abraham, but going all the way back to Adam. Okay. And we don't need to read them all, but look at Luke three thirty eight. So we're, we're all the way back to the very beginning which was the son of Enos, which is the son of Seth, which is the son of Adam, which was the son of God. No. Okay, now, is Luke calling Adam the Messiah? No, but he was just, he's, he's the, the, the son of God. So you want to let the, the context, for what we're talking about here, the sons of God are the angels. Okay, yeah. the context that we see here immediately seems to be the fallen angels. Okay, we looked over the thing in Job, and, and that seemed to be all the angels. Okay, and so that's why when, when Satan's tempting Eve, he says you can be like the gods to know good and evil. We're talking about angels. Okay, yeah, right. and as, as we go through this study, we'll find out there are guys like Jupiter, Mars, all those celestial names that are out there. They're, they, they come from somewhere. They didn't, man just, man's yeah. not that creative. He thinks he is. Right. right. But the, those, my position is that most of these things are named after the celestial bodies in that angelic, angelic realm. But the question becomes, and I left this with the teaser last time, well, how does that work? How do angels and women, human women, how do they, how, how do they have a baby? Okay? And more, more precisely, I, I left off with the, the question, is it even possible for an, for an angel to do that? So, it is. Come with me to Matthew 22. And I can tell nobody did their homework because i got to figure if somebody did this. Oh, Dave, i got the answer. i got the answer. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about good angels? What's that? Are you talking about good angels and they're sons of God or are they... Sons of... Uh, the... The sons of God, I would take, I, would, I think, to be the end, what we're calling the angelic realm. Now, I, I say it that way because there's a there's a discussion, and I don't really know that I have an opinion on it. Is an angel and a seraphim and a cherubim, and there's a couple of others. Are those all angels? For the sake of my conversation, I'm, yes, I'm calling it the spiritual realm, the angelic realm. Um, that he talks about here. And, and some people would, would say, no, a, an angel is one type of creature and a cherubim is another type of creature and a seraphim is another type of creature because they, they do seem to have different descriptions. Cherubim clearly have wings. Seraphim clearly have wings. Cherubim appears to have two wings. Maybe a seraphim maybe six wings. Or if I got, maybe I may have those backwards. But, and angels, we're going to see here tonight, there's no issue. There's nothing that tells you that they must have a wing. They do fly. They fly. Good ones. There are good, there are good angels and there are bad angels. Absolutely, to this very day. For this context, they yeah. are, they are good angels. Well, the one, the well, which context? Whatever word. Yes, in Matthew. Yes, that, yes, <laughs> you're going to see that. So look at Matthew 22, and verse 29. And again, once again, I'm just gonna say, my 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 point is not to teach a lot of these verses we go to, which is something I, I try to stay away from going to a verse and not teaching it, but I just want to pull some things out. So this is the issue where Jesus is talking about, you know, the the, the woman's got the, the the seven husbands, and he they're, they're they're trying to tempt him. Well, who's who's she married to in heaven? Okay, and look at what Jesus says, verse twenty nine. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye de, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. So, I said I'm not going to teach a verse, but just pay attention. Maybe you make a note here on this verse. Not knowing the scripture causes error. You see what he's saying there. They wouldn't make the error if they knew the scriptures. Okay? Verse 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the verse where people come along and say, well that can't be angels back there because angels don't marry. 
Okay. So first thing I would say on that is, like Liz pointed out, which angels is Jesus talking about? Is he talking about all the angels? Well, in the context, it would be the angels of God. So I take this to be, he's talking about the gods, the, angel, the angels of God. Okay? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Look, come, come over to Revelation 12, just for comparison purpose. Revelation 12 and verse 9. nine revelation 12 9 the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so i, I it seems to be that now that the fall has happened the angelic fall not the no, not adam's fall but the angelic fall has happened the the angelic the angels are, are divided in, into two groups that are identified as the angels of god or the angels of satan okay so i take this to be here in the context i think it's important to pay attention to it Jesus says that it's God's angels that don't marry. Okay? Now, I'm probably going to... The other thing is, why don't angels marry? Well, maybe they don't need to procreate because the right. population of them is, is what it is. And, and How about this? Marriage is for procreation. Who's marriage between? Gender-wise, who's marriage between? Men and, and women. women. Male and female. Yeah. Yep. Angels are male. Yeah. Despite what paganism tells us, yeah. angels are always male. And we're going to look at some, some, some verses here. So if, mar if, if marriage is between the male of a species and the female of a species, wouldn't that make it hard for the angels to marry? No, no I mean, unless they're in rebellion, of course. But so, uh, I mean, th th there's, there's a lot going on there, right? That, that's, that's, there's, there is that issue. So... Let's look at, at, at this issue, because there is an issue, there is one where people say, well, here's women. Look at, look at Zechariah 5. You guys are probably seeing now why this is not just a two-week study. <laughs> we haven't even talked about giants yet. And uh, by the way, unless April gets on Zoom or on Facebook here, I didn't have any chocolate tonight. We'll see what it says. Yeah. I didn't see you. That's right. <laughs> Zechariah 5. Yep. Page 935 or 934 if you got the right Bible. <laughs> Zechariah 5 and verse 9. Then lifted up my, I my then lifted I up mine eyes and looked and behold there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then I said to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, To build it an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Good evening, Lynn. See you there. Good to have you with us. So you see, so everybody wants, will tell you, well, the angels, there, there's two female angels right there in chapter 5, verse 9. But they're not identified as angels. Right. They're identified as women. Yeah. The context would be human, mm -hmm. human females. Yeah. Right? Now, what's curious to me is there is an angel clearly identified in 10. See, in verse 9, he says there's some women, and the women had wings. Okay, so that's kind of, I mean, I, I, I will be the first to admit that's a weird thing. Okay, but it, they are, it, it's identity, it's a vision that he, he saw. Okay, and then it says, and then uh, Zechariah talking to the angel, then I said to the angel, and in verse 11, and he, referring back to the angel, said unto me. So here, in the very context, the angel identified as a, as a male. I just want you to see that, that he's talking to an angel, right. and the angel identified as a he. The 
one where every, you know, it, it, anytime anybody says, well, only, you know, the, the, there's a female angel back there in Zechariah. That's what they're talking about. Zechariah knew what an angel looked like because he identified one. The King James translators would have known what an angel was because they translated the word such and such. Okay. So that's the, that's the one place people want to. And so, again, so much of what we see regarding angels is just not correct. It's, 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 it's pagan, and it makes people believe things they ought not believe. We're not going to get into it, but, you know, I mean, the, the whole thing of guardian angels and, 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 and all that stuff is just... No such thing. No such thing. No such thing. You know, uh, Israel has identified that we having an angel. That's Michael. Uh, there, Jesus references the angels of the children, which is something kind of weird. Um, but the only thing Paul ever talks about with angels is that they're learning from us. You know, in time past, angels ministered to Israel, and, right. and clearly, right? right? I mean, I don't think anybody would argue with that, right? Yeah. Right, right up to the right up to the birth of Christ. In fact, at his at his temptation, it says the, then the angels came and ministered yeah. to Christ. You know, they didn't teach him the word, but right, they took care of him. And, and a lot of, I mean, you can right here. This, here's an angel ministering to Zechariah. That's what, but that's not happened today. Today, uh, if you would come with me over to Ephesians. Does it then? Uh... Revelation, they come into play with each of the seven churches. The seven churches, yeah, each each church there, and uh, and that'll really confuse you if you want those churches to be Gentile churches. <laughs> that'll really right. mess you. I mean, and and so it, it, that's where you, you start taking these things that that you know are don't look like they have any relationship to each other, and then you start putting them together, and you see, okay, well, there is some confusion. If you want those churches in Revelation to be Gentiles body of Christ churches, well, they all have an angel. So, okay, we are pretty close to what's that angel doing? You know, you go back and, and Daniel, he, Daniel talks about all, uh, uh, Gabriel talks about all those angels that he had to get through, the Prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. I, he withstood me. And then I got to go back and Michael's going to have to help me get back. And then after the Prince of Persia, then the, uh, the, or the Prince of Greece is coming, right? Well, that's what happened on earth, but it's all, he, he, they're talking about the angelic realm. But anyhow, well, what are angels? What's what happening with angels today? Look at Ephesians three. This is this is where Paul reveals the revelation of the mystery, and we'll just jump into the context in verse nine, um, uh, verse eight. Unto me, and that's Paul, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent that now in the principalities and powers in heavenly places, what are we talking about? The angels. Those are the angels occupying those places. The, the principalities, the power, the it's not mentioned here, but the, the might, the dominion, any other than it's named. The principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which we he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. The angels today are not ministering to the church of the body of Christ. The church of the body of Christ is ministering to the angels. And the angels look down, and, and when they see a, a member of the body of Christ or the local assembly, or, or, or at, at large, if you will, operating as the way they should, they see that manifold wisdom of God revealed. Yeah. So think about it, and, and we're getting a little ahead of where I wanted to be, but think about what we talked about last week when I said God threw the light switch on and the angels sang. Okay? You think they didn't understand a little bit about the wisdom of God then? And then... That they, that they see all these things play out, right? And then Jesus Christ is resurrected, and there's a wisdom. We, we can see we the, the giants, and okay, well, hey, Satan got you. And then, of course, then he does start dealing with Abraham, and then Israel, and the angels are going, okay, he had a plan. And then, well, now Israel's taken lawfully captive. Nebuchadnezzar takes him into Babylon, and there, and again, the angels, well, Satan got him. And 400 years later, John the Baptist shows up, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And, okay, well, maybe that's the answer. Well, he's killed. Satan got him again. And then they see Lord Jesus Christ resurrected, and they say, okay, I, I see them. the angels now are understanding. I see how the Old Testament, I, I see I, the Bible is what they would call it, but I, I see how that all worked out now that the Lord Jesus Christ, and boy, he really, he really put it to Satan that time. And goes, but you know what? All of us in heaven, we're fine. And then Saul, and the revelation of that mystery gets revealed. 
and the angels are understand that last little bit that's to be revealed of God's wisdom, and it just is continuing. And so they looked at us, and they learned to they learn from us today, instead of us learning from them like Israel did. And, and that's a huge distinction. If you can get that distinction, that, that'll keep you all out of a lot of error. A lot of error. I mean, I got a person that's very, very dear, near and dear to me. Just this very week told my kids that there's three, she, she keeps three angels on her car. One on the hood to protect them in the front, one in the back to keep them, and one on the hood sitting like a Buddha, I guess. To protect, and I'm just, this is somebody that should, this is somebody that should know better. Absolutely. And, but a, angels, I think that's why Paul talks about the worship of an angels and intruding into those things that haven't come into somebody's mind, because we have a we make angels little gods. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't necessarily mean we here, but yeah, yeah. that's what. That's what and I'm not talking about Christians right now. I'm talking about the, the, the religious world. Right? Sure. Well, I'm, well, let's talk about Christians. Um, yeah. You know, the Word of Faith movement. You know, Hillsong, or Word of Faith. Yeah. Which, uh, hyper charismaticism, but they. They have they they make claims of angel feathers falling from the ceiling because it bears you know you know by, they appear in the Bible as wingless men but so apparently they're molting or something up in the rafters and so 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 they collected all these well they they haven't collected any of these angel feathers to have them you know tested or anything like that but it's yeah it's a it's a big scam you know in the gold dust and stuff like that. And you know, if you went to talk to any of the, I bet if you went to talk to any of those people about any other subject in the world, they would not come across as kooks. They're probably very intelligent. Oh, oh yeah. Well thought out. I mean, they're probably Absolutely. doctors and engineers and mechanics. Yeah, they and, are. And, 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 and do all those things. And, and, and when they walk inside that church door, they just become, woohoo. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, look over at Revelation. While right you're in Revelation, look over at Revelation 7. Let's just look at a couple of verses real quick. I think in the long run, it comes down to just creation against evolution. And that's yeah. the, the basis of it all. Yeah. It has to be. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> to believe one over the other would insult the God. Yeah. His word, His word over <laughs> over whatever this uji thing that they call evolution is. Oh, yeah. I mean, with a slap in the face. Lynn, yeah. I, I I see your question there on on Facebook about about Israel in 1948. The thing about Israel, Israel in 1948, God did not do that. God did not reconstitute Israel in 1948, at least not in accord with the prophecy. Um, any prophecy that was ever applied to that should have run its course by by now. If, if God was going, if that was God in, in uh, setting up Israel in accord with prophecy, whatever He was going to do should have happened already by now. But and you know, I, I see the thing, and you know, a lot of people think they had help. Well, they did have help. They had they had the British Empire. And uh, that that um, nation over there, that political organization over there in the Middle East, and everyone knows I'm a huge supporter of Israel, not for biblical reasons, but for political reasons. So this is not meant in any way against the nation of Israel. But that was that, that's a political organization at the end of World War II, done by British and the, the British nation and the Allies. Uh, for many different reasons, and it had nothing to do. I mean, men did it because of religion, but God didn't do it in accord with prophecy. Now, is He going to use that nation some someday? Yeah, very well could be. Could could it have been? Could God that be the, the beginnings of what God's doing? Some people think so. I, I think that tends to kind of violate the separation of church and prophecy. But I, I, I wouldn't get. But again, it, it's been too long. It's been sixty years now, or whatever it's been, seventy years, and. Um, that's just a religious organization, or uh, I'm sorry, that's a political organization over there. There, Israel is no different than America or Zimbabwe or yeah. Colombia or Greenland or Iceland or they're, Russia they're, or Ukraine. They're counted in uncircumcision, just like the Gentile yeah, nations. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, people want to, and you know, quite frankly, and that's where American foreign policy comes. For American yeah. foreign policy is based on the fact that if America blesses Israel, God will bless the nation of Israel. Okay. And that's not what God's doing today. And I'm, I'm all for supporting Israel. i got no problem. Again, I'm not bashing Israel. But the reason we do it, going back when it started, is a, a different story. So uh, look at Revelation 7 and verse 2. 
I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four uh, four angels. Look at chapter 8, verse 2. Or verse 3. Another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Um, just one more. I, I got a bunch. We're not going to go look at them all. 10-1. So another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloth, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and, excuse me, his feet as pillars of fire. Again, my point is, and you can get yourself a, con uh, a concordance, and you can go through and find all these things of angels. You're going to see they're always men. Um, except, like I said, that, that one in Zechariah is one everyone wants to point to, but it seems to me that that very clearly is not talking about angels there. Okay. <laughs> So, okay, so we got over one, one hump, if you will. But, but, but there's the other issue, too, though. Um, how does it even happen? I mean, angels are angels. Right? Um, look with me over at 1 Corinthians. What do I have it written down? I've got it written down somewhere. i got too many notes, too many different places. There's one flesh of one and another flesh of another. So, uh, right here, First Corinthians 15. And again, the, Paul's not making the same point I, I am here. We're just jumping in. But look what he says here. Um, verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Right? And that's why we don't engage in bestiality, right? For, I don't mean to be crude, but just all the flesh is different. Okay? That's why horses and fish don't mate. Okay? It's just different. There are celestial bodies, there's an angel, and bodies terrestrial, there's ours. But the glory of the celestial is one, the glory of the terrestrial is another. And one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, one star differeth from another star in, in glory. And, and again, Paul's making a completely different point than I'm making, but I'm just trying, and I think you, you probably know, hopefully, the flesh is different. The, 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 these different things that we're going to call flesh, even yeah. though it's, it's, you know, and especially the celestial's got one body, the terrestrial's got another. So it, it, it's interesting how that, how that works out. But I do think that there's an answer to that. And this is going to be one of those things where I don't really quite understand how this works but I just see that it works. Okay, so come with me to Genesis 18. This is probably the big study like this. There's verses that I forget about that, oh, that'd be a good verse. Angels, I mean, manna is called angel's food. In the song, you know, it, it's and, and so I mean, so angels eat, they eat manna, okay. But look at just some of these things here in chapter 18, Genesis 18 and verse 1. The, the hymn in the verse here is Abraham, and the Lord appeared unto him, Abraham, in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent in the heat of the day, and lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and bowed himself toward the ground, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts, after that ye shall pass on. Um, for therefore you come to your servant, and they said, So do as thou hast said. Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, make cakes upon the heart. Abraham ran into the herd, fetched a calf tender and good, gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he dressed and set it before him, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did what? Eat. eat. They eat, ate human food. This turns out to be the Lord, the pre incarnate Lord Jesus Christ, and two angels. Abraham recognized them as man-like. He recognized that they would be dusty and tired and need re refreshment. Now, I'm not saying God gets wore out, but he I'm, really have these two angels in mind here. 
They ate, they took nourishment, they ate human food, they did everything. So what, what am I saying? They did everything that a human did. If they have all of, all those processes, I mean, think about it. You know, I got Jocelyn on my mind and her digestive tract. If they ate, you got to figure the food didn't just magically disappear. I mean, it had to go. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's, yeah. okay. that's what I was bringing up with, with right. Jesus because he ate. Right. After, after right. Right. He res his resurrection. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> These are angel, the, the, the pre-incarnate Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and angels. How does this work? I'm not, I'm not even going to pretend to tell you how that works. I'm just going to tell you what this says. Yeah. And so make it, make it, okay, if they could eat mm. and their bodies were going to do those other things, isn't there something else their body could do? I see what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, is, is, is one a stretch? Yeah, yeah. No. They, they, had, they must have had clothes on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now look at chapter nineteen, verse one. This is how you know that there's two angels. It, the Lord speaks to Abraham, and, and the rest of eighteen, he doesn't go. But in verse nine, nineteen, verse one. I'm sorry, chapter nineteen, verse one. There t came two angels to Sodom and even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Okay. Yeah. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. He pressed upon them greatly. They turned into him, entered his house and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house around, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men? We did clearly identify them as angels. But the men of the say, say think they're men, so they look like men, which came in unto thee this night, bring them out unto us that we may know them. And then it goes on. Okay? Right. So these men thought they were going to do something untoward with these yeah. angels, okay? Again, I don't, my, my goal here is not to get gross and pornographic and make this thing. Right. I just want to say, it, it seems to me if they can do some of the human stuff, they ought to be able to do all the human stuff. Yeah. And it seems to be what Genesis 6 is saying. Well, I mean, I mean yeah. if they're, they're eating and drinking, then you'd think they'd have to, you know, right. they'd have to urinate. Uh -huh. So if they can do that... The, the, Why can't they do anything else? But right. it's, it's also interesting that a lot, in, in and even Abraham instantly knew there was something different about them. That he, he they did. Down. So so even though they appear as men, there's there's something extra. What do we know about Abraham? Extra. Think about this. What do we know about Abraham? So what you, the, the, yeah. point, the point that, that James is making is, Abraham and Lot seemed to understand that the that the men, there was something different about them. They were angels. Yeah. They were the Lord. Okay, what do we know about Abraham? That's the easy one. What do we know about? Yeah, him? in relationship to God, he was righteous. Yeah. Okay. What did we learn last week about Lot? He was just. Yeah. Right. God looked at. Remember, we we read the verses. Right. He, his just Lot, his spirit was vexed. Yeah. So they had that heart towards God to begin with, and they right. could tell that there was something different these other men didn't seem to these guys didn't seem to these guys just saw something carnal that they could hmm. okay. right because that would be the worst mistake right oh yeah a person can make you know? yeah so just anyhow that way. <laughs> exactly so my only argument in, in, in all of this and it, it went about how i thought it was going to go and i didn't <laughs> want it to go there but is the dna the, the reason that the that the, the the angels and the women produced these giants because the DNA got corrupted. You have two different types of flesh that were never designed to be together, that Satan decides he's going to put together, and the DNA gets corrupted. Okay, we're going to see this going forward. There are things in the Bible called satyrs. I, I think I'm saying that right. Okay? Yeah. A lot of the Bibles will translate it hairy ones. The King James by King, instead of satyr, the King James translators translated it satyr. A satyr in Greek mythology is half animal, half man. Mm -hmm. The King James translators knew what they were doing when they said that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I take them at, at their word. What were you talking about there? And this is down the way. Uh, right? You know about corrupted DNA. That's also the answer to why do the animals have to be destroyed? Because an animal is not a moral creature, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so clearly the DNA was getting messed with. So you result. And then the result is these giants. Okay? Mm -hmm. Come back to Genesis. If you're in Genesis, just look back, just a refresher. Look back at Genesis 6 and verse 9. Actually, we'll start in verse 4. See how these giants are, are described. 
the last third of the verse, last half of the verse, they bear children to them, and the same became mighty men which are old, men of renown. These giants became mighty men and men of renown. And we're going to look at some of those. What you find, though, mighty men, they've got, they're strong, they're valiant, they're not afraid of battle, okay? Men of renown, they have a reputation, good or bad, but they have, they have followers, okay? People look at them, and, and I mean, I... Yeah. The Bible doesn't say that he is, but I, in my mind, in context, I would think the world looked at Nimrod as That's a mighty, as as mighty hunter before the Lord, yeah. as a mighty man, as a man of renown. Right. Okay? Yeah. And again, that's an evil guy. Now, you can't get carried away with that because David had mighty men. David's, David, David, had, David had a 30, 30 men that are defined as mighty men, and we'll, we'll go look at, at that in a, in a little bit. Okay. So that's what those, those those giants, they were mighty men, I mean, so intimidating. Okay, but look down at verse 9. This, this definition of Moses, Noah, and we talked about this last time. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. There it is. There's his instruction in righteousness, right? He was an instructor of righteousness we saw in Peter last time. Yeah. Okay, he was a just man and perfect in his generations. Now, it doesn't mean he never sinned or the people right. before him never sinned. It meant his DNA was not corrupted. He w There were no giants in his line okay and noah walked with god the other person at this time that did not walk with god was who enoch okay Noah was just man and perfect in his generation now how do i know it's a pretty bold statement to say that the whole world was corrupt and and, and everything that god says and that there were giants in, in the world but noah noah's whole line missed it because the bible tells us Look back at chapter 5. Um, let me, I'm just going to jump into verse 12. It started at Adam, but, but it, gets, it gets going here in verse 12. Canaan lived 70 years and, and begat Mahalalel. Uh, verse 15. Mahalalel lived 60 years and begat Jared. 18. Jared lived 100 and uh, 60 and two years and begat Enoch and Enoch lived 60 and verse 21 Enoch lived 65 and five years and begat Methuselah uh, uh, who, who, and Methuselah verse 25 Methuselah lived 180 and seven years and begat Lamech verse 28 Lamech lived 180 and two years and begat a son and called his name Noah we know all the daddies yeah. from Adam to Noah we know every daddy and we know every daddy's daddy. There's no, there's no corruption in that line from Adam <laughs> to Noah. And remember we saw this all started when men began to populate the earth and bear women. Okay, and we said that was probably about 130 years after uh, the time of creation, give or take. Okay. No, the DNA had not been corrupted. That's why these and, and, and the others may have lived a long time too. But that's also one of the reasons these people lived a long time. That DNA wasn't corrupted, right? These people died at a thousand years. I mean, five, yeah. 500, 600, five hundred, six hundred, a thousand, nine hundred years, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not like it was one hundred and fifty years or a hundred years or eighty years and then cancer got them, or right. or. Uh, a, a DNA problem. You know, we were talking about that person earlier. I don't want to say the name on, on the video here, but but that person earlier who just had a, a gene was different, right? That that didn't happen here. Now, come with me to Second Peter two verse nine, because you got to remember what was going on in the world. The world was a terrible place right then, right back then. start in verse 7 just to get kind of the context of what he's saying. Verse 7 or verse 5 And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly 
delivered just Lot, vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Don't ever think living amongst sin doesn't wear on you. It will. Okay. Uh, verse 9. The Lord, this is what I was after. Now think about Noah living in that terrible world. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God knew how to preserve that line. Right? God understood, hey, I, I'm going to keep that line pure. Okay? Because again, the question becomes, Satan's doing something. The angels are just not, it's not like... Satan sent his angels down and said, hey, you guys go do this. Let's see what happens. And uh, up pop giants. He knew what was going to happen. Okay? I think he was the one I manipulating no doubt, it. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. He's yeah. behind that. And yeah. has been from the beginning. Absolutely. Abs absolutely. Um, time to take a bath here. Pretty, pretty soon what's that? I said, it's going to be time to take a bath here, though, pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, look over, so let, let's, let's kind of think about now what we just read about the mighty men, okay, and, and the men of renown, and just see what the Bible has to say about that phrase. Look over at Joshua 1. Joshua 1, verse 14. They're, they're getting ready to go in. Joshua, Joshua's given the nation a, a, a pep, pep talk, if you will. Verse 14, he says, Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan, <laughs> that ye shall pass before your brethren armed with all the mighty men, what? Of valor and help them. And, and th these mighty men, what, what are they doing? They're leading... They're leading the people into the, in the nation, right? They're the armed men. They're, they're going in. They're men of valor. They're, 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 they're strong. They're not scared of the battle. Look over at 2 Chronicles 13. 2 Chronicles 13. And then we're going to look at two peoples, two verses about these men of renown, and then we'll talk about why, why the giants. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 13 and verse 3 and Abijah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war even 400,000 chosen men Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him with 800,000 chosen men being mighty men of valor these giants were Battlers. So think about that. You're just a man, and there's somebody that's a giant. We saw. I think. Yeah. We. I think one of these times we looked at the the, the bed of this giant, the the giant the bed the guy's bed was 13 feet. So and we're not talking about like an, a, a seven footer. We're talking about a 12 footer or something <laughs> like that, right? Yeah. They're men of valor. They're good at battle. You tell me that would not be an intimidating oh, yeah. person, okay? Okay. Um, now, like I said, you can write. We don't need to go look at this, but if you write down, uh, well, shoot, we're so close. Look at First Chronicles eleven, because a mighty man is not always a giant. So you got you, again, you, you got to pay attention to the context. First Chronicles eleven and verse ten. We're, we're going to talk about David, and that, that, that's King David. Um, verse 9, I guess. 11, verse 9. So David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. These also are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom and with all Israel to make him king, according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. So this is the number of the mighty men which David had, and, and he goes on, and, and it, it's a bunch. But he had quite a few mighty men. Okay, so again, well, who are these guys? These are the guys that are lead, leading his battle, and, and they're 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 helping 
they're helping them get greater, get greater and greater. The, the, now the Lord's using these chief men, right? But I don't want you to think that every time you see mighty men, it's talking about giants, because there's no indication that right. these mighty men are giants. Okay, I think there's one that maybe it could be, and I, I didn't spend a lot of time looking into that. I just I remember from before. But just because something says mighty man, yeah. doesn't mean it's always a giant. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's look at the men of renown, and then we'll see why giants. Men of renown, numbers one. What I'm trying to do looking at these is just give us a sense that these giants were real and how intimidating they would have been and the, the reputation that they had. Maybe we haven't looked at the bed size yet. Numbers 1, verse 16. Numbers, right? They're going to number the nation. These are how they're, these are how they're, they're, they're numbered. Verse 16. These were renowned, in the previous verses, told you who the leaders were going to be. In verse 16. These were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, Heads of thousands in Israel. A man of renown, he's a leader. He is held in esteem by those around him. Right? He is set up to be the leader of, of the group. That's who these, these were. Men of renown, princes of tribes, heads of thousands in Israel. Okay? Uh, and then here's a bad version. Come with me to uh, Numbers chapter 16. There's another kind of weird thing that happens in the Bible. You guys are familiar with the rebellion of Korah. This is it. Number 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, the sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you seeing all the congregation are holy. Anyway, th these, these people had a good reputation among the congregation, as, it, as it's called here. They were famous. And they went to Moses and said, Moses, you're taking on too much. <laughs> and not, I don't know if you're familiar with the story. If you're not, read it at some point. Moses said, okay, you guys come back here and we'll, we'll see who's who. And uh, eventually the earth just opens them up and swallows them whole, sends them down to hell whole. So there is that. I teased it, so come with me to Deuteronomy 3, and we'll talk about it, and then we'll... Deuteronomy 3, verse 11. This is a guy we're going to get familiar with over the next few weeks. A guy named Og. Og. Verse 11. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Okay? So Og is a giant, but he's a, he's a remnant of the giants. Okay? Behold, his bedstead was as a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof. Four cubits the breadth of it after the cubit of a man. If you allow a cubit to be 17 and a half inches, which seems to be what it is, some people want 16, some people want 18, 17 and a half seems fairly mm -hmm. innocuous, that makes this bed 13 feet by 6 feet. That's a big bed for a big guy. And he's the remnant. He's the remnant. After Satan is no longer actively producing more giants, if you will. <laughs> He's the remnant. We, we talked about it last time, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, each generation got a little more watered down, it seems. This guy's the watered down version. It's almost like Mormonism or something. Like that. <laughs> this creepy dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the other thing, too. Hopefully, at the end of this study, whenever we, we get done in about 100 years, we realize all this stuff that's out in the world, it comes from somewhere. 
it's not the creativity of man. Like I said earlier, we are nowhere near as creative as we think we are. No. You know, ho hopefully a lot of this too, especially you, you look at Hollywood and go, okay, that's that verse and that's that mm -hmm. verse and that's that thought. And, and, yeah. and it, it's, it's just Satan desensitizing the world. And, and it works, you know, and, and I think we've said this, I, I'd be the first to admit, when I get to heaven and I meet Moses, I'm going to be shocked that he's not Charlton Heston. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know better. And when I think of Moses, I see Charlton Heston. I can't, I can't not see it. Yeah. Um, and that, that's one problem with, with Hollywood movies. Anyhow, that's neither here nor there. Okay. So, why giants? Legitimate question. Why? Why were there giants? Why, why was all this going on? That the angels came down. What, what, what did Satan think what he would accomplish by sending his angels to have relations with with women? And then what? What did he think the giants would do? What would be the point? Conquer physical world. The people. Intimidate people. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, what I does mean, what does Satan mean? Does anybody know? What Satan adversary. means adversary. The, the very the very definition of the word means adversary. So, in a big time sense, whose adversary is he? Uh, God. God's. He's not ours. I mean, yes, he fights us, yeah. and yes, he is our adversary, but only because we're on God's team. Yeah. Right? Right. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't know our name. He doesn't care about us and, and all that. He, what he's doing is he's adversarial to what God's doing. Mm -hmm. That's why the fellowship of the mystery and the discussions about the Jesus, Jesus Christ preached according to Revelation the mystery are so insulting and why he's, 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 he's fighting it so bad, why he fights the, the King James Bible in the English language so bad yeah. is because he, those are God's tools that the God has decided he's going to use today and, and, and Satan is exclusively focused on doing the opposite of what God is doing. Okay, That's why, God, that's why Satan doesn't need to make you sin. You, do that for your, you, you take care of that for yourself. <laughs> that's why the mystery ought to be a secret. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. ex ex exactly. And, and yeah. we'll, we won't study this here because we study that, that that enough, and we will continue to study that. But that's exactly right. That's exactly right. If it hadn't if, if it hadn't been kept a secret, then Jesus Christ or Satan would not have crucified the Lord of Glory. Okay. So come with me to Genesis three verse fifteen. You got to go all the way back to the beginning. Genesis 3. So the the fall of Adam and Eve happens in the early chapters here. Verse, verse 9, God calls him to Adam, and then he starts having this discussion with Adam and Eve. Okay? Look down at verse 14. The Lord God said unto the serpent, obviously that's Satan, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15, here it is. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise the, his heel. So in the context here, the last thing God says to, Abraham, to Satan, I'm sending somebody who's going to bruise you. He's going to crush you, right? If your heel gets, gets bruised, but the other person's head gets bruised, what's happening? You're stomping on his head, right? Yeah. Okay? So right here, now Satan, now Satan knows there's a Redeemer, there's a Messiah, there's a Savior coming to save who? Mankind. Mm -hmm. What's the enmity? It's between Satan and Eve and between her seed, between Satan's seed and her seed. Okay? So Satan knows, okay, I need to, I need to make mankind, I need to make Eve's seed unusable. Okay? Corrupt. Corrupt. Great word for it. Okay? So how does he do it for, how, how, what's the first thing he does? Well, before you go on with that, yeah. Dave, I, speaking of uh, Eve, uh, when she had her firstborn, uh, it, I think it says, where it says, I received a man from yeah. the Lord, but it's not a man, it's the man. It's not a man. We're going to go, I just, this, I just, this man was, yeah. Yeah. I just want you to see, we're going to go, what does it say, right there to Genesis 4 verse 1. And let's see what Genesis 4 verse 1 says. <laughs> I love that. I love that when you guys track with me. That makes it so much fun. <laughs> you are exactly 
Right. Chapter 4, verse 1. <laughs> Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Okay. What's that man going to do? In Eve's mind, what's that man going to do? Be the Redeemer. Yeah. 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 You can tell from the way the way she, she, she talks what, that she's expecting something specific. She knows she, she was there when Genesis 3.15 was said. You know who else is thinking that? Satan. Satan. Mm-hmm. Satan. And again, she bare his brother, Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And then we, we know he, he ends up killing her. Look over at verse 8. Cain talked of Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a father of lies. Okay? So, it's an interesting thing with Cain. Um, Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, Let's go look at some of the things that we find about Cain many years later. Look at 1 John. We're going to get 1 John and then Jude. But 1 John, not the Gospel of John, but 1 John. First John 3 and verse 12. Not as Cain, uh, first John 3, 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. Wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Yeah. To identify right here, you find out Cain was operating under the instruction, if you will, of Satan. Cain was of that wicked one. Okay? His own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Again, we're not going to study it out, but you get the story. Abel brought what God told him to bring. Cain brought an offering, and you can bet it was the very best fruit and vegetables anybody's ever seen. Okay. And he didn't bring you know, he didn't he didn't bring the junk. Right. He came to God and he said, Look what I did. I brought I brought you the best that I did. You must be pleased with it. He didn't approach God the way he didn't re, he didn't respond in faith. He brought an offering of the certainly the best that he had, but it, he didn't approach God. Because what did he do? Satan said, "That'd be good enough. You take that." Look over at Jude eleven. Maybe Jude 10. Yeah, Jude 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, speaking of some people he previously talked about. But what they know naturally, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. The gainsaying of Korah there, that's what we just read. We didn't read about Balaam, that's the talking document account. But but you, you see, there's the, there's this way of Cain, and this way of Cain is to is to do Satan's bidding, is to do to 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 approach God the way you want to approach God, which is not unlike what Christianity does today to a large extent, and that's probably a pretty bold statement. But Christianity does come to God the way Christianity wants to come to God, instead of the way God says to come to Him. Okay. So, yeah, exactly. So, so they, they sin. God tells Satan there's a coming redeemer. Uh, 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 go back to, to Genesis. Uh, Eve says, I got a man from the, a man child from, from God. She clearly thinks it's the Messiah. Satan, Satan does too. So what's he do? He just corrupts Cain. I, you know, did he possess Cain? Did, how did that all work out? I don't know. Uh, maybe he talked him into it. We, we don't know. I just know he, how he's identified of that wicked wind yeah. and followed after the way of Cain and whatnot and corrupted and, 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 and killed. So what did he do? You had one that was evil, one that was righteous. Satan would have, could have determined real quick, okay, well, I already, I, already, I already took Adam, so let me go test his two sons. Well, I, I got Cain, 
So that would make Abel the righteous one. If Cain's the unrighteous and Abel's the righteous, what's Cain want or what's Satan want to do? Got to get rid of that righteous one because that righteous one's a Messiah. Okay. Um, look at Genesis four again in verse twenty-five. Adam knew his wife again. She bare a son, called his name Seth. For God, she said, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Okay? And to Seth, to him also there were born a son, and whom he called named Enos. And men, then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So you can see what you can see what she's thinking. She's thinking Seth is to replace Abel. So I got my Messiah back. I got, you know, I got the Savior back. I got the coming Redeemer coming back, right? I got, I got, I got the fulfillment of G3, of, of Genesis 3.15 again. Touche. Yeah. So again, what, Satan, what is that? Yeah, 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 she's probably right. Okay? And then the very next thing you get is you get a clear delineation. Just follow how the, the, the Word of God works. So the very next thing you get is a, a clear delineation of the lineage to Noah. And then you find out about the flood and the giants and Noah being perfect in his generations, it just flows right. perfectly when you when you look at it. Okay. So the giants, the, the purpose of the giants, we're gonna go a little further past this. What happened as, as we read in, in the study of, in, in Genesis six, what happened after Seth was born? What did Adam and Eve do after Seth was born? You guys remember? For, that that's, then the sons and daughters were born, right? Right. Right. And that, we, 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 wherever we, we read it, um, but uh, or I'm sorry, yeah. A, after Seth was born, then Adam has sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's happening? The world's populating yeah. too quick for Satan to kill every other one to, to identify. Okay, that right. is. That's not. That is. That. So what's he do? That's when it starts to. Let me just corrupt the whole thing. Yeah. Let me make it not usable. Yeah. I'll take my angels, go to now with these women. We'll get some kind of corrupted DNA. We'll make these giants. We'll corrupt the DNA, and then we'll we'll take these giants, these mighty men, these men arena, and we'll go ahead and we'll we'll kill the other people if we don't if we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We right. just read God. Is, God knows how to protect His people. He protected Noah for at least a hundred, for 120 years. Once He came to Noah and said, "Noah, build a boat." It was 120 years where God had. If, if anybody ever had a hedge around him, you know it had to be Noah. Okay, so God's, he's got, he's got one perfect line, Adam all the way to Noah, <clears throat> Noah makes it to the boat, okay, nobody else does, and I, I think I told you last time, uh, most people that do statistics and things like that figure there were a couple billion people on the planet at the time of the flood, yeah, so, I mean, that, 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 that's, that's, that, that's a big extermination, if you will. Okay, but that's how corrupt. And so when you go back and you read those verses about the man's heart was only only evil continually, and the earth was just right. evil. <laughs> I mean, just just every yeah. only eight, maybe only one. He converted the converted his seven family members, right? right? You got to figure Mrs. Noah was probably okay, but maybe not. You know, and and, and for 120 years he protected them, and then he brought the flood, and she, but then Satan go, hey, it worked the first time. Let me do it again, right? Yeah. So what's he doing? Now, he, 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 we read the thing, there were daughters, or there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, okay? So before the flood and after flood, there were, there were giants. But the giants did die off. We just saw Noah, Moses talking to Noah, said this guy, oh, he was a remnant of the giants. Right? As he did, designed the bed. Now, we're going to go see in, in a while, Joshua goes fights giants. Abraham fights giants. Okay? But then, why did they start to go away again well that's in Genesis 11 Genesis 12 rather so go to Genesis 10 and we're just going to go to the very last verse you can read the the, the uh, genealogy if you want but verse 31 Genesis 10:31. These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their tongues, and their lands after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Okay? So you get that lineage, and then you find out, okay, there's all these nations that have been spread. And then chapter 11. 
And the whole earth was a one language and a one speech. And it came to pass, they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them truly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad the face of the whole earth. Okay? They're supposed to be spreading out over the whole earth. They say, No, we're going to build a city, we're going to build a tire. A tower, think high place, okay, whose top may reach into heaven. Don't do, don't, don't do what I, what, what I call this. Don't have the, 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 the prejudice of time. These people were not idiots. They didn't think they were going to build a tower that was going to go into the third heaven. That was not. What are they doing? They're building a, for lack of a better word, they're building, because uh, I can't remember the word, uh, the thing with the telescope on top. Observation. Observation tower. Uh, there's a special name for it. Anyhow. They're building. They're, they're trying to get high, close to the gods. Yeah. The gods. The gods are in that second heaven. They're trying to get close to the planets. Okay. We don't. We're not gods, people. Let's make our own name. The Lord came down to see the city and tower which the children of men built. The Lord said, "Behold, the people is one. They have all the language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing." will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Think corrupting DNA. One of the things that they wanted to do, just like was before, is, is do all these things. Seven, go to, let us go down, and therefore, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. They left off to build the city and their porch called the Babel. Okay, so God comes down, he sees this, they're not doing what they're supposed to, it's going evil again. He says, I'm going to spread them across the world. Okay, and he does. Okay, and now jump now jump to twelve chapter twelve, verse one. The Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation, I will bless thee, and make thy name great, thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God just told Abraham that he's not dealing with anybody else anymore. He's dealing with Abraham. Mm -hmm. Who else heard that? Satan. Satan, Satan didn't have to keep corrupting the, 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 the planetary DNA, if you will. He knew where the, he, okay, now I need to go over after this guy. And then his nation. Okay. Come with, you can leave your hand here and come with me and, do, and look at Romans 1. We're over time. We'll end here real quick. <clears throat> this is why we say in the immediate context of Romans 1, he's got the Tower of Babel in mind. Okay? Verse 18. Romans 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. He's talking about the Tower of Babel in the immediate context right there. Okay, They weren't thankful. We, they didn't need God. They had Nimrod, the yeah, mighty hunter right. before the Lord. He'll provide for me. What do you see there? The, the changing the glory to the image of like man and bird and four-footed beasts. Mm -hmm. Religion. Yeah. We're not going to worship God. We're going to worship our creation. God gave them up. Verse 25 who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. That's what Satan wants. He wants that worship. Okay? And he gave them up to some stuff. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And he didn't deal with them anymore. He said, yeah. go to. I'm dealing with Abraham. So you know what Satan did? Satan just marshaled his troops. 
They end up on the and, and we're, we're, we got we're out of time now. But he yeah. marshals his troop up in up in Palestine, the Promised Land, for four hundred years because he, he tells no or Abraham that. But the reason the giants went went away is they had served their purpose, and their purpose was not God, by the way. It was Satan's purpose to corrupt the DNA to keep yeah. this 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 Messiah coming. Once he found, okay, hey, God's dealing with Abraham and his offspring. I gotta I I, I gotta get the offspring. And what's he doing? Continually trying to get these oh, guys. Yes. Think about think about mm -hmm. Jacob and Esau. Jacob's a rascal, yeah. right? Uh, and, and, and all through this, and think about think about Joseph's brothers. Yeah. This doesn't come from nowhere. Yeah. And the famines, you know, that drove, drove them into Egypt. You know, e e exactly. <clears throat> um, and then uh, <laughs> I thought I hate it when I interrupt myself. Joseph and his brothers. Joseph and his brothers. Satan attacking. Oh yeah, so so the, the that's why you guys heard me say many times when we go and we read the account of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, it's not the issue of whoo that was close. Jesus <laughs> almost succumbed. It was Satan going, okay, I've waited three thousand years. Are you the guy? Yeah. <laughs> right. You are the guy. Okay, I got it. Yeah. It wasn't. There was never this thought that if if, if Jesus had fallen down, if, if Jesus had given in, Satan would have known what. You're not the guy. Yeah. You, 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 so yeah, I mean, right, right. yeah, you know, we, we tend to get that messed up, and like I said, and go, oh, boy, that was close. Boy, wouldn't we need a problem? But no, that was Satan testing and proving. Are you the guy? Are you the yeah. second Adam? Gonna kill you if you are, because that's why that that's why the giants were there. And we'll, we'll we'll go deeper into the giants as we go forward here. But that's why there were giants, because Satan was trying to stop that coming redeemer. And once and when he knew where it was coming from, he didn't need him anymore. So they died off. So, so in the, in the, you know, the circumcision for, for Israel, you know, people talk about what it was for. You know, it's a, it's a seal for them, it's a covenant. But, mm -hmm. but it's a breeding thing too. So you, the, the, there's no. It makes it harder for the giants to or to corrupt the DNA. Anyways, if, they, if they're not going to be breeding, but they're not identified. Yeah, you know, you're not circumcised. Right. You, you know, uh, so a change. Uh, that's why, and, and, and that's why so much they relied so much on who they yeah. were a tribe of. Yeah, it proved just like we read in Genesis five. There, it, okay, it it proved. I mean, they were probably weren't thinking this, but but God laid that out so that everybody knew whose daddy was whose daddy. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff that that's why being a bastard would be such a bad deal. Yeah, I mean, it makes some of some of the laws, you know, when they're when they're covenant kind of yeah. makes sense. They're a protection against that, you know. Then to remember with with God and His laws and all the things He did, He does He's not capricious. He doesn't make you do something just just so He has the power. He doesn't make right. you jump just just so He can make you jump. <clears throat> okay, thank you, everybody. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love and for your grace. Um, as I said earlier, this is a fun thing to study, but there's also so much good doctrine and so much understanding we can get when we study the the, the giants and what was going on from a biblical standpoint. Let, 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 even if we don't understand some part of it let your word be true and we can see Satan responding to your plan and your plan just moving right along as you designed it all along. You never, ne never, in, your plan's never in jeopardy, mm -hmm. but it's just moving right along as exactly you anticipated, you knew that it would. Uh, we do thank you for your, for your wonderful wisdom throughout all ages, culminating with us in, in the dispensation of grace and the, the mystery program. Uh, again, we thank you for your love and for your grace. In your son's name, amen. 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 Okay. All right. Good to see you, everybody. We will be back on, what's today? Tuesday. So we will be back on Thursday night, both on Facebook and on Zoom. Have a good evening. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was fun. I got that, that was great that was, fun. Yeah, that was. Oh, good. And